The lumbar ESP block is conceptually similar to the thoracic ESP block in terms of the fact that A, the bony transverse processes and overlying erector spiny muscle are key landmarks, and B, that the injection of local anesthetic is performed into the tissue planes deep to the erector spiny muscle. However, there are critical differences in lumbar paraspinal anatomy versus thoracic paraspinal anatomy, and thus lumbar ESP and thoracic ESP blocks are very different techniques. First, the morphology of the lumbar vertebrae is different. The articular processes are more prominent, the transverse processes are significantly longer, and they do not articulate with any ribs. As a result, the ultrasound imaging of the lumbar and thoracic vertebrae look quite different in the transverse view compared to the parasagittal view. In the transverse view of the lumbar vertebra, the articular process and spinous process are useful orientating landmarks when trying to definitively identify the transverse process. In particular, note that the longer length of the lumbar transverse process means that when scanning in the parasagittal view, we should be aware of which portion of the transverse process we are imaging and targeting. Is it the medial half or the lateral half? Now this has potential implications for the nerve targets that are reached by local anesthetic spread, as we will shortly see. Second, the lumbar nerve roots and their branches are also organized differently. As with thoracic spinal nerves, the lumbar spinal nerves each divide into dorsal and ventral rami. The lumbar dorsal rami branch off to travel posteriorly and ascend to the surface of the back, dividing into three main branches, medial, intermediate, and lateral, which follow fascial planes between the multifidus, longissimus thoracic, and iliocostalis muscles. The main division point of the spinal nerve root into dorsal and ventral rami, where the medial branch begins, is closely related to the junction of the articular process and transverse process. Thus, it makes more sense to target the medial half of the lumbar transverse process rather than the lateral half and the tip of the transverse process. This can be done as follows. From the parasagittal view of the transverse process, slide the probe laterally until the dropout shadow disappears. Slide the probe medially to reacquire the transverse process and continue until the transition to the articular process shadow is seen. Slide the probe laterally again to image the medial half of the transverse process. More importantly, the lumbar ventral rami, unlike the thoracic ventral rami, do not enter or lie within the fat-filled paravertebral space. Instead, they pierce the psoas muscle, traveling in an oblique anterolateral direction and uniting within the psoas muscle to form the lumbar plexus, which gives us terminal branches that innervate the hip region and anterior thigh and knee. Note that this anterolateral diverging path again suggests that the medial half of the transverse process closer to the articular process is a preferable target to optimize for spread to the lumbar plexus, rather than aiming for the lateral half and tip of the transverse process. It's also worth noting that lateral to the tip of the transverse process at higher lumbar levels, the quadratus lumborum muscle, and not the psoas, is what underlies the erector spiny muscle. And furthermore, the kidney is located deep to that quadratus lumborum. If, therefore, quadratus lumborum and the kidney are seen on ultrasound in a parasagittal view, they are a clue that the imaging plane is too far lateral. The path that the nerves follow through the muscle provide a channel for a potential retrograde spread of local anesthetic to the epidural space, as has been demonstrated in MRI imaging studies. This is more likely with high volume injection. This can be a desirable or undesirable outcome, depending on the clinical scenario in which the block is being applied. Just as with the thoracic ESP block, our most up-to-date understanding indicates that the dorsal and ventral rami should be regarded as two distinct clinical targets in the lumbar ESP block. If analgesia of the spine and the lower back is desired, the dorsal rami are the primary target of interest. If analgesia of the hip and proximal lower limb is desired, then the ventral rami are the target of interest, and we can regard the ESP block as a lumbar plexus block by proxy. Follow the links in the description for more details on how to perform these two variants of the lumbar ESP block.